it snowed last night. It's September and it snowed. So I'm going to hide out here in my shop with a nice warm cup of drink and a nice hot soldering iron and I'm going to build a kit. Of course the question is which one? So I think I'm going to go blindfold mode and reach into the bin and pull out this one. What is this one? Hmm. Well, let's find out. Okay, what have we got here? Looks so like it's got one IC and a pot and a handful of other bits and bobs. Let's, uh... Oh, we even got a knob. Okay, don't need that anymore. So what does this board say? Um, you got a duty cycle and a distortion, maybe? And a course and a fine adjustment. And, oh, right, I remember now. That kind of gives it away. This is a uh, test pattern generator. It can do square waves and um, triangle waves and sine waves. Neat. So that chip must be a function generator or a signal generator. Easier to read if it was right side up. Focus, you know. What do we got in the assortment of parts down here? We have a terminal block, we have the 10 turn potentiometer, 502, 50, 500, 5 kilohertz, or 5 uh, K ohms, I think, or is it a 121? Hmm. I'll have to check that. We've got a single turn trimmer pot. We've got just the normal potentiometer of what that knob goes on. So that will be, I assume, the frequency adjustment, the coarse frequency adjustment. And then. Yeah, okay. And then that 10 turn pot will be a 5K. There it is there. And then these other two pots, are, that one's a 20K and that one's a 100K. Are they marked? No, but I can measure them. All right, well, let's uh, get this clamped up and start soldering. The only thing I'm disappointed in so far is that there's no socket for Mr. Chip. Maybe I'll dig into my, uh, what is this, two, four, six, seven, 14 pin chip. Let me see what I've got in stock. I mean, I'm not offended by soldering directly onto it, but why risk damaging it with my crappy soldering? I'll just quickly take the time to grab the data sheet for this thing. It is an ICL 8038 which is a precision waveform generator voltage controlled oscillator. Um, and apparently from Intercell, or the original manufacturer, is it? Or Rennie Sass, I guess. Um, it is no longer manufactured by them. This one that I've got may or may not be one of theirs. It might be an aftermarket. It doesn't matter. Um, what does it have to say for itself? The frequency can be selected from 0 0.001 hertz to up to 300k, which is more than enough for most of the things that I'm doing. Features, low frequency drift, low distortion, high linearity, wide frequency range, variable duty cycle. Oh, well, that's good. And it can drive up to 28 volts output. Wow. So the chip itself, pin 1 is a sine wave adjustment, pin 2 is a sine wave out, pin 3 is a triangle wave out, uh, duty cycle and frequency adjustment on 4 and 5, V plus input, frequency modulation bias, 2 no connects, sine wave adjustment, V minus or ground, timing, FM sweep input, and a square wave output. Oh, that's kind of neat. And internally, there it is. Supply voltage maximum 36 volts. Output current sink 25 milliamps. Supply voltage minimum single supply is 10 volts, maximum 30 volts. 
Okay, I'll have to remember that. I'll probably run it on 12-ish or so. And there's what's going on inside it. So it's if you want to build your own the hard way. Some design tips on reducing distortion and how to select the various uh, resistors. But I'm not going to concern myself with that because we have already got that figured out by the kit manufacturer. If it doesn't work, I'll come back in here and do it the hard way. But for now, let's just trust that they're not completely useless. Alright, so we know a little bit more about that chip. I do have some 14 pin dip sockets, which I think I will put one on if it'll mechanically fit. Get the soldering iron fired up. Alright, so let's decide what to put on first. I'm thinking, oh, I see a diode in here. What is he doing? I didn't notice a diode on the uh, on the data sheet. That diode is a reverse protection diode. Nicely done, kit makers. You can't screw up and put the uh, put the power in the wrong way. Okay, we'll get that in there. I'm doing this in no particular order. Okay, so we have a capacitor there, C104, a little, uh, or sorry, what is that, C1, it's a, a 104, C2 and C3. Okay, so there's two 104 caps of the little ceramic variety. That's those two guys. I'm going to poke in a bunch of components just so I don't have to keep flipping back and forth. You could do it in a different way. If you wanted to but I'm not too concerned uh, if you wanted to say build part of the circuit and then tinker with it and build part more and change it but I don't think I'm gonna do that this is just a fun little weekend kit build so there's a few components in grab my vice I don't have many vices this is one of them one thing I like about this, it's got the uh, grooves in the jaws. It, that's really for grabbing onto round stock, but it works really well for grabbing onto a board and holding it. I don't have one of those fancy little board holder things like I've seen some guys on YouTube use. I do have one on order, but it's not here yet, so I'm not too concerned about it. Okay. Let's just get started, I guess. This is the diode. And I'm using this little where am I? I'm using this little chisel tip. It's not the, the finest tip that I have for my iron. But it's a little bit bigger for through hole work and if I was doing surface mount, I would probably put this tip back on. But for through hole work, this one's just fine. I was actually doing some desoldering uh, a little while ago on something. That's why I put the bigger tip on and I just stuck with it because it's not that big a deal. This certainly isn't a tight enough board for it to matter. Okay, that's those two guys. And that's this other capacitor over here. There we go. Grab my cutters. There's those guys, nothing shorted. Okay. What should we put on next? Okay, we've got an LED. It's marked as D2 on there. There's the flat spot. That side. Okay. So I'm going to guess that that goes, yeah, it'll probably have a resistor in series with it. Okay, so I'll put the LED in. I'm going to put the other two little ceramic caps in there. Uh, one of them is supposed to be a 102 and one's a 103. 
there's the 103, there's the 102. So, which one is this in my fingers now? That's the 103, which is C4. Again, I like these, and I'd like to see the schematic of it, but this is going to be pretty close to what we saw on the data sheet. And the board's got the silk screen with all the values on it and everything. So I'm not too stressed. Again, if things go horribly wrong, we can always troubleshoot. So the two little ceramic capacitors, which are in parallel with each other. So what are you guys doing? Smoothing and decoupling? Probably. Oh no, they're not exactly in parallel. No, they're not at all. They go to... That's the chip, that's one of the pots. Okay. Between one of the pots and a bus. That's better. I get better heat transfer when... I keep the iron nice and clean. And then this LED... So that's... That's one of the power inputs up there. These two are the power inputs. I think. No, wait a minute. Let's just see what's going on here. So that's the ground, and that's the okay. So the ground is this trace here, which those two caps go to ground. This little cap here that we soldered in area goes to ground. One side of the LED goes to ground. And then it connects up to the V minus. And then the V plus is there, and that's the diode. Okay. So here is the LED. Wow, that's really standing off. That's okay. I'm not doing this for beauty points. I just want to have a functional thing. And this guy, along with the PWM generator that I uh, pulled out of my mailbag a week or so ago, will just add to my supply of test things. Okay, what other capacitors do we have? There's an electrolytic. There it is. That says 100 microfarad. That says 220 microfarads. <laughs> Remember I said I trust these guys? Well. Oh, okay. So the negative voltage in and the ground are in parallel. And this capacitor just across the negative and positive voltage. Okay. So that is just power supply smoothing. So it doesn't matter that it's a it's a larger capacitor than what the board silk screen says. It'll actually do a better job. Or at least better at taking out uh, uh, large fluctuations anyway. So what next? Find some resistors. So there is... Let's zoom in here. So we have 110K there, 110K there. And 110K there. Three 10Ks. A 200 ohm. One, two, three, four... 33 Ks. All right. Three 10 Ks. Okay, that's those guys. One 200 ohm and four 33 K. Okay, so that's those guys. And I think I've mentioned this many times before that I am somewhat colorblind, but I'm going to 
I'm pretty confident that those are the 33 K's up there. And there's three of those guys, which will be the 10 K's. There's my 200 ohms. I was fairly confident in that. So, a 10K. I'm just going to stuff these guys all in. So I think I'll start up at the top here just... Just because. And I am going to bend the lead over in the direction that the trace goes away from the pad. Just to keep it kind of orderly so it doesn't cause problems later, potentially. It's not a big deal, it's just. Let me see if I get a little bit big and blobby like that. It's not overhanging an adjacent trace now. It's just on top of its own trace. So that's not a big problem. Oh, we keep the tip clean. <laughs> I'm not even doing this. Well, that's starting to get a little bit like a forest in there. So I'll just clean some of these out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. That's the one disadvantage of stuffing a bunch of components in simultaneously. So it kind of gets in your way a little bit later on, but I mean, it's not a big deal. Okay, so that one, since they both want to bend the same direction, I'm just going to do one first. And that'll hold it, and I'll do the other one. And the last one. And this guy's just hanging off the end of that chip socket. Hmm. Try not to get too excessive amount of solder in here. But you can also go too light, which isn't going to help anybody out either. Okay. That's all the capacitors and fixed resistors and diodes. Next... Let's put in, well, let's put in the chip, or I mean the socket. So the divot goes that way. These sockets also have a divot on them. Now this one, I'm going to have to uh, use the YouTube solderer's favorite technique, blue tack, or blue sticky generic stuff. Because, of course, this isn't branded blue tack. This is from the dollar store. Let's pick up the four corners to hold it in place. And then just quickly bang these off. Cleaning again. Okay, there's the socket. And the Bootech didn't even get goopy. That's good. Alright, uh, let's put in the 10 turn pot. 
and it doesn't really matter which way up it goes but there's a little uh, one section two sections so I'll put it that way with the screw at that end it really doesn't matter because the wiper comes down the middle anyway Okay. Trim those guys a little bit. Uh, what else? So the big pot, which is also a 5K according to the silk screen on the board, goes in there. And I think I'm going to just nudge those little gripper, mechanical grippers in. I'll solder them first. They're going to take a lot of heat. Let that's. I'm just pushing on the back of it to reflow that so that it goes into place. Well, for those ones, they're not an electrical connection. They're just a mechanical connection. You don't have to fill the hole. And I decided not to. But they are making a mechanical connection now, so they're doing their job. There's the little switch, which is frequency range low and high, I'm guessing. And it's just a single pole double throw switch. And again, it's got two little mechanical leads on the end of it. A 104 and a 203. Okay. 104 is one a zero and four more zeros. So that would be the 100K, which also says 104 right on it. And the other one, 203, 20K. Yep. That is the duty or duty cycle the square waves I'm guessing because sine waves don't really have a duty cycle so about all that's left oh, only one thing left to solder actually and that is the connection pins And again, I'll throw a bunch of heat in there. So this one, actually, the two ends, the negative voltage and the ground, which are the same as that whole trace that wraps around there, they also have three little tags of solder, or of uh, copper, that go out onto the ground plane. So that's, that's nice. That just keeps noise down by having that ground plane everywhere. Not that it's a big hairy deal in this thing because it's in the kilohertz range. Admittedly hundreds of kilohertz, but still. If it was going up into the very high kilohertz and into the megahertz, into RF range, then a ground plane would be a very good idea. Did I get those all? Yeah, it looks like they're all making connection. There's one more inspection here everything's got solder I don't see any solder bridges right the chip pins are a little bit cattywampus they're not too bad but give them a bit of an alignment there not too bad that way okay the notches on that end, dot for pin one. Notches on that end. So I'll just put one row of pins in. Then push the chip against that to get the second row in. Make sure they're all... Nothing's hanging off the edges. And just push it down nice and evenly chunk there it is 
All right, now to test. Okay, a little bit of time has passed. I got my test set up, uh, set up here. Got 12 volts on the power supply. Oh, forgot about this guy. Critically important. Get the knob on there. Looks about right. Yep. Okay. So that's the frequency knob according to the information on the board. Anyway, um, so I've got El Cheapo scope set up here on the little kickstand that I just hastily put together while I was paused. Um, power supply connected to positive and negative. I've got the ground of the scope connected to the ground. So we turn the power supply on and got a power LED. That's an excellent start. Okay. So I've got these two pots set, all the pots pretty much set to the middle. This one I've got uh, this fine tuning I've got set uh, about the middle of its range. And I'm in the high range here for frequency. So let's go on to the square wave. Oh, look at that. Come on. Come on, automatic stuff. I'm, there we go. That should be a lot easier for you guys to see too. I've made some changes. My camera's in auto exposure. So when I zoom back out from the uh, black background of that, it's going to get a little weird, but whatever. At least you can see this now. So right now, uh, square wave, uh, 50 ish percent duty cycle which makes sense because i got that pot set in the middle um voltage peak to peak is 11 volts that's pretty close to rail to rail since i'm running 12 volts um what else so i'm at 2.37 something kilohertz and that's with the pot set in the middle position i'm gonna crank that up to maximum and what do we got on the scope now? That is 2.846. I'm just going to go in and uh, tweak the fine tuner up. Should be about five turns, I'm hoping, if it's a 10 turn pot. What's that? 6.151. Okay. Now I'm going to flip the high low range switch to low. 596. And I'll crank the pot down as low as it'll go. And I'm off scale. So let me just change the scale on the scope here. Oops, wrong way. I'm going to change the time base on the scope, I guess. There we go. 50 hertz. Oh. Look at that non-linearity down there. That's disturbing. I wonder if the distortion pot does anything about that. No, I'm thinking the distortion pot has to do with sine waves. Okay, well, that's not super awesome. Uh, we're down to about 50 hertz. Oh, let's, uh, let's change. Actually, no, I'm going to crank that back up so we can see that. Hmm. Okay, where were we before my kickstand fell over? So, uh, right now, yeah, I'm going to start tweaking the duty cycle pot. Right now it's kind of in the middle. I'll go down to the bottom, 67%. Go up to the top, 23%. Okay, but I hadn't really expected this thing to be a PWM generator anyway. That's what this thing is for, uh, which is exactly a square wave frequency and duty cycle. So I'm not too stressed by that. So that's all right for square waves. Where is it? There we go. Let's move on to triangle and sine waves. I'm going to just bump that sensitivity up a little bit. Ooh. So there's the triangle wave. And again, I will tweak the various pots. I'm not expecting... Oh, duty cycle. Oh yeah, it goes from just a straight up and down triangle wave to more of a sawtooth wave. That's interesting. With the that's with the duty cycle pot. Let's try the distortion pot. That doesn't really do anything. And of course, the frequency up. So that's the top of the low range, which is what is that? Five hundred seventy. 
and again down to 50-ish, which is pretty much. So there we have. Oh, that's curious. Where's that distortion pot? You see that zero crossing there? That's interesting. Does the distortion pot do anything about that? Not really. So that triangle wave is not super duper linear. That's the duty cycle. Up in the kilohertz, that's not super duper linear. It's got a little kick in it. That's disappointing. Let's go back down into the middle of the range. So that is coming out of there at, what is it? It is out of focus, sorry. So that's coming out of there at three volts peak to peak, whereas the square wave was 11 volts peak to peak. Okay, now the sine wave. The sine wave is 2.3 volts peak to peak, and it's a little bit distorted too in the middle. And this is changing the distortion pot. Well, that's disappointing. Let's go back down to low range and get change the time base of the scope again. So there is some, it's not, it's not a perfect sine wave. Hmm. I wonder how it sounds. I was hoping to use this for testing audio amplifiers and I was hoping to get a relatively clean sine wave out of it. This isn't that. Yeah, that's not performance. That's well, that may be inaudible. This is at 4 kilohertz. That's not going to be a huge thing, but it's still not what I was hoping for. Oh, duty cycle does affect the sine wave too. Let me zoom out so we can see a couple of sine waves. So there's the duty cycle roughly in the middle. Okay, so it does lean it around a little bit. That's pretty much a little. Okay, well, it's not not the best, most uh, accurate, most precise thing in the world, but I think it is a little bit cleaner uh, waveforms than this guy was giving me. But I've, so I've got two signal sources now. This one, you may recall, it's a 555 timer, and then it just uses these RC filters to knock out the high frequency components out of the square wave to create a sawtooth and then a triangle wave and then eventually a sine wave and as it goes through those passive filters the amplitude just gets lower and lower through each stage this one at least it's relatively consistent on the triangle and the sine wave for levels um, the square wave of course is is still hitting rail to rail but i don't know it was a fun little kit to build anyway Thanks for watching. I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, questions and comments, as always, down in the comment section. Uh, thanks for stopping by. I'll talk to you later.